watched I watched uh, Rainbow's End this morning, and like I said, you're great in it. You pop on screen. I think you definitely oh, bring a good. you bring a spark. You bring a spark to the movie. Oh, um, I'm glad. I'm around. glad to hear that. So, I mean, for, for you, I guess, can you just talk a little bit about the types of roles you go out for or get offered now, and what was it about this one in particular that that really appealed to you? Well, um, I, I get I, I get offered stuff, but I don't always take take the role. I I what I like is taking roles about nice people. I kind of have a rule that I, I don't want to play anyone that I wouldn't want in my house. You know, mm. like I don't. <laughs> You know, I I just turned this other one down and she was it was like an evil grandma of Hansel and Gretel. And I just thought, oh, and at the end, she's like cutting up people's the kids toes and everything. And I just went, no, no, I'm not doing that. So in a way, um, I don't really want to do a lot of heavy drama anymore because I I have done that and I can do it. But there'd have to be a significant reason to do it. It, you know that like an important movie that would be worth it because when you put that kind of energy in it's very draining and you're always sort of waiting for the difficult scenes to show up I mm. you know and you just want to get through them um I like comedy the best and I like lightheartedness and I like playing people that I actually like you know <laughs> I feel like this character is a bit like you too. I mean, I don't know you personally, but just seeing interviews with you through the years, you're very outspoken, you're funny. And I feel like you get that from that in this as well. <laughs> I people, people have said I'm outspoken, but if you'll notice, unless, I mean, I certainly would have throughout my career skipped the interview portion of it if I had been allowed to, <laughs> you know, I mean, and, and what I didn't know in my early career was very, very good self-preservation skills. So I, you know, I, I'm really not that outspoken. I just, I'm just not a bullshit artist. You know what well, I mean? Like I'm just I not a say, compared to the rest of the industry. Yeah. You are a different sure, breed. And I appreciate that. that. Nat in this movie, she really is there for advice. She doesn't bullshit people. She she tells it like it is too. Who has been that for you? You know, it, has there been someone who has has really been there to offer you advice when you needed it, or maybe well, been my, a cheerleader I, for you? Yeah, my my sister Kathleen and yeah, Bob, yeah. my husband, and believe it or not, my children are very good at telling me what what they what they think, what their opinion is, and they're not they're not aggressive and saying like, you have to see it my way. They're just like, this is my opinion. And, you know, so I, I feel like I did a, I think I did a good thing when you just try to take responsibility for yourself and you allow, you don't smother other people and you allow them to make their mistakes, you know, and, and try to do so in as, as, non-judgmental a way as possible, you know, Mm -hmm. yet keeping your boundaries intact. That was always hard for me too. My, I'd go into boundary failure and be like, you know, and then I'd have to sort of work my way back and realize like, that's not their responsibility. That's mine or vice versa. Like that's not my job. That's their, their job. Mm. And has there ever been anyone, I guess, also in the industry side of things, you know, either co-star, director, producers, anyone in the crew that has kind of given you a piece of advice that has really run true or or that you maybe still carry with you? Well, mostly I've been the giver of advice. I have to confess. Warren Beatty once told me to shut up in the press and I should have probably listened. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, he's not the type of guy I want to take his advice of, you know. No, <laughs> so. no and I, I, I was rewatching your your infamous Joan Rivers interview, just to prepare for this. And it's also been 30 years now this summer, which I think is wild. But I think even, that's wild, too, isn't it? <laughs> so like, wow. Even Joan brings that up during the interview, though, that like, hey, you should take this advice and stop talking so and much just like, yeah and I said well I know but it's too late now but it's like just re-watching that and and seeing a lot of what you talked about then and how relevant it still is now I mean 
you mentioned how actors need to be in these big blockbusters so that they have the freedom to do indie work. We see that now with people doing these Marvel movies, you know, how yeah. women aren't allowed to be angry in the industry and, and how you vowed never to be quiet about issues that are important to you. And it's yeah. like, I don't think what? it did too much good though. I mean, in a sense, I mean, I don't have I'm, any, re- I don't have any regrets. That's true. But yeah, you know, the, the, my, my strategy as a, you know, in my twenties and in my thirties, it was very missing because I just, like I said, I didn't have those kind of uh, preservation skills. I didn't, you know, I didn't uh, know how to censor myself at all. Yeah. But I think part of it's also the culture. It's like, it, I think you can't put it, obviously you can't put it on yourself when the eighties and nineties oh. were even more so misogynistic than they are now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They were, they definitely were. Yeah. That doc, it brought up a lot of just old media coverage and a lot of people I think have started to see how much they were part of the problem. And I'm sure that's something wow. that you have experienced too. Just like, you know, there are people that are actually apologizing to people like Paris Hilton, Britney Spears for the coverage really? that they did back in the day. Wow. <laughs> like who? Who's apologizing? Uh, like Sarah Silverman apologized for jokes that the she comedian? made. Comedian? Yep. Comedians are apologizing. Oh I goodness. think a lot of it is being held accountable for stuff they said in a way that they weren't back then. But you know, have, have people ever come to you and maybe apologize for how you were treated or how they treated you back in the day? Not as of yet. No. <laughs> no, I was the, I, I, I was the, the, the beginning of all that stuff with Warren Beatty. It was like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, I mean, like I said, I, I could have handled it better, but I wasn't going to let people take advantage of me. Yeah. Period. That was it. You know, yeah. And and what you what I realized was, you know, you get a big movie and you get the list, you know, of people. And I think very quickly it became clear that I I was not a bend over type of gal. And they were like, nah, we don't need to put her on the list, you know, Mm. because because and and I think there is a lot of people sleeping with their leading ladies or directors, Mary, you yeah. know, and all of that kind of stuff. And it just goes on. I don't know how you would avoid that. You know, it's it's I, what I told uh, in another interview, we were talking about it and I said, it's not really men and women. It's more evolution. Yeah. How evolved you are, because the more power you get, people get twisted from it. And it's it's hard to maintain a humility that is a little more wholesome. You know, Mm. there's a lack of wholesomeness. And I think people, well, during the time, I think people confused my wholesomeness with being stupid. And I could see why it would be, you know, I can see that mistake. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Especially when you're starting out, it's like that false naivety comes across and it's like, no, but I know who I am as a person. And (laughs) Well, also, you know, the movie business isn't particularly humbling. It, it you know, no. in the beginning, it, it kind of blows so much smoke up your ass. You don't know which way is coming or going. So, you know, I must be really wonderful, you know, <laughs> so, you know, all these people are giving me all this money and attention. I must be a big deal. You know, that's one of the conclusions you get to in the beginning until you kind of get some better focus. Mm. And now, you know, this whole the Catwoman thing is a thing that I love so much about you <laughs> just because I love how bold and, and gutsy it just was how big of a move it was despite how it may have ended and what yeah, have happened people didn't the quite idea get it, of it the way it was intended <laughs> <laughs> but the idea of it is so great and I think I saw people talking on Twitter just like if that if she had done that and then gotten the role just the perception I think would have been so the opposite of what it ended up being because well, you see people like Ryan Reynolds made a whole fake movie for Deadpool. And then because that did well, they made these movies. And it's like people well, do make get these. That. I, I was <laughs> talking to Brian Cranston. We, I saw him at the, the screening of um, Trumbull, where he played the mm. writer. And um, he was so positive. He was really a nice guy. And I, I was very like impressed with, with how good you know, and authentic he is. And and he said, yeah, um, you need to, you need to get back out there, you know? And, and I, and I looked at him, I said, well, I said, the, the business isn't, 
as kind to women as you, you imagine. I mean, it can, yeah. it can let Robert Downey be in prison and bring him back. It can, you know, either, either if the guy who played Kelsey Grammer, you know, Richard Dreyfus. I mean, all these people had all of this alcoholic, you know, accidents, almost killing people like, or, yeah. you know what I mean? And they, for the, the men, the, the men are more um, tolerant, but w- women, not so much. And I, I said, name, name one that you think has made that type of comeback. And, and then he said, well, then you'll be the first. And I thought, oh, <laughs> that's such a nice thing to say. I really, I really liked uh, his, his positive attitude. That's a nice point of view to have. <laughs> yeah. I, thought and I mean, was- you have been doing a lot of these more indie movies is something big budget. Like if it came along, would you, would you want to do it? Well, yeah. I mean, sure. I, I like working. I do like, working. um, I, I do like my freedom too. Yeah. You know, like it's, it's, it's not the same now because I, I don't have to scramble for the money. I'm of retirement age. So yep. I'm, I'm very relieved about that. And I'm, you know, I can choose before it was a scramble because I had a family, yeah. I had to earn money. I had to, you know, and God knows what else I could do. You know, it's like, goodness gracious i'd be an excellent nanny or a housekeeper or a cook those three things i would have no problem (laughs) doing um so if the right one came along and i do audition for the ones like the pilots i i've never gotten in 25 years an offer for any kind of any kind of sitcom or pilot or you know, mm-hmm. series in LA. And I'm always baffled by that. And I tell my manager, like, what the hell? WTF, you know, <laughs> like, what is this? So it's so much water over the dam. Now I don't, you know, I don't really care because I, I, I do keep going. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm not defined by the West coast. You know, Blade Runner recently got a sequel. I know you spent a couple of days on set for it. Um, the same director is doing the Dune remake. Another and I movie. begged him to put me in it, but he wouldn't. You did? I did. No? Yeah. I emailed him. I said, please, please put me in the, the sequel, but he didn't. And that was and after I, I thought that he turned up for I thought, Blade Runner? <laughs> well, I guess someone, you know what? I think the audience would have been pissed if I hadn't have been in it at all. Yes. And I think that's <laughs> what they were trying to solve. But they, you know... Harry can get as old as a roadmap and they'll always make sure there's a part for him. You know, yeah. that's what I mean. They don't, they look out for their own, but they, they, there's not that many women that are powerful enough to look out for their own, you know? Yeah. So. Now I feel like recently it's been like Carrie Fisher and Linda Hamilton are kind of the only ones who have got to come back to these franchises so yeah. much later as themselves now, like, yeah. you know, yeah. without having to go through, CGI and I'm, and I'm and, glad to see that too. You know, yeah. that is good. <laughs> but I mean, how does it feel in general though, just to have these, these projects that you are a part of to see people revisiting them now, so many years later and, and trying to find a way to continue or, or retell that story. Well, it's, I, I imagine it's bittersweet. <laughs> it, it's, it's not, a, I just feel, I feel good for the traction I was able to have. Yeah. at particular points. I'm really grateful for that. I got, I got to leave a mark, you yeah. know, the, the, the fact that, that it maybe wasn't as big a mark as I would have liked is, you know, it's like apples and oranges. It's like you, you got, I, I got to do something and I feel really good about that. And I, and I, I I'm not like a, I, I, I really always kind of considered acting a job you know, yeah, and yeah. I was very practical about it. I wasn't like, Oh my God, you know, you know what I mean? I was like, yeah. okay, this is what this job is. This is what I need to bring to it. This is how, how could I best do that? Yeah. So I look at it more practically. And, and the funny thing is it's like that rap, it, it, you know, when, when, when people have a perception of you and they think, Oh, crazy Sean Young or drunk Sean Young or, you know, whatever it is. It, it's like, I don't have any control over that. And I think yeah. what's true is I'm just practical Sean Young. You know, I, <laughs> I look at the lay of the land and I see what's possible and I see what isn't possible. And I, I make the best of the circumstances that I'm in. Yeah. And I think that's, a I, I, I don't think I can have a better attitude. You yeah. know, that's, I mean, I feel like that is yeah. the way to combat it, combat yeah. that. Yeah, day by too. day, how how is this really? And not imagining, you know, woes that aren't there, and not 
stirring up woes that are long gone. You know, mm. it's like that's that's where I am today. And I mean, looking ahead, what would you still like to do that you haven't had the chance to? I mean, you say, you know, sitcom, a sitcom lead would be, I think, great for you. Yeah, I do too. <laughs> yeah, and I think, and I, and uh, I think the audience would uh, actually come out to see me. You know, I think yeah. that they, you know, I think I, I'm somebody that people would watch. I'm not, I'm not sure why the decision makers don't comprehend that, but they don't yeah. seem to. Um, there's a lot of changes in the business now too. It's it's definitely a very different business than it was in the eighties. And um, a lot of people are moving to Atlanta. That's where, that's where mm. I bought a townhouse, which I'm lo really looking forward to moving into. And there's a lot that I can do in Atlanta in terms yeah. of dancing in my own interests. So we'll, we'll see how it works. Production's booming down in Atlanta. I mean, you yeah. have Marvel, AMC, they, Ter Tyler Perry, they all have studios down there. Yep. yep. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, was, that was my that was part of my thinking, you know. Get you in a Marvel movie. That would be fun. I <laughs> now for a Marvel movie, I I might play a bitch. That would be kind of fun. I think I'd be good at playing a bitch in a in a or, or like as you know, like one of the evil people. Like, like a like, like a cat it. woman, you know, yeah. like that type of character. A nice, yeah, nice Marvel version. Mm -hmm. A final be a final F you to, to DC yeah. and Warner Brothers. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. That would be nice. And now your kids, they're in their 20s. I'm, I'm curious, you know, what do they think about your career? Do they have favorites of your old films or even stuff you're doing recently? Just how do they feel about your, your resume as a whole? Um, I think they're very proud of me. And I also think they knew I, I got a, you know, an unfair rap at a certain point. I think yeah. they think I've had courage, you know, I know they think I've been courageous and I know they think I've been, uh, you know, tough on myself too, like really trying to improve and, um, you know, be, be a good person. And, and, uh, and also I, th I think they know that my interests don't lie just in, in the movie business, you yeah. know, like I, I like tap dancing. It's something I spent a lot of time doing before COVID, um, I was living in New York on 47th and 10th and I would go to the health club and go over to the dance studio and go up to the screening room. And, you know, it was really fun and I, I, I miss it. And I I'm hoping that it, it, we open up again and get, get people's businesses back mm -hmm. on track. And, you know, cause that was, that was, that's been tough. It has been a pleasure talking to you. Thank a pleasure you. watching you and your new film. And I hope we see even more of you going forward and, yeah, just, yeah, I'm happy you seem happy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Well, be be well, be safe, and, uh, and thanks for giving me your, your time.